Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to Saturday Night Music Club number 11, filmed right here at the Record Room Record Store in downtown Scottsdale, Arizona. First off, huge thanks to John Rose, the owner of the Record Room. And uh, let's get started here. We got our cast, full cast today, what, six people? We got Dream Pop Jesse in the back, James, Jonathan, Robert, and our special guest, Brent. So tonight, uh, two record theme as usual. The first theme was a killer compilation, non-soundtrack, and a uh, side project. So uh, we'll kick things off with uh, Brent's compilation. Uh, mine was Lethal Weapon, Suicide's Greatest Tragedies. Uh, I played Side B, which has The Boys Next Door doing a really great cover of Lee Hazelwood's Boots. Uh, yeah. So that was a that was a fun one. It's Australian press on Suicide Records. All right, we'll start with Jesse. Um, I liked it. It actually felt more like an album though, rather than a complete. Yeah, album. Album. A lot of the songs kind of not that punk sound the same, but a lot of it just kind of seems like it was in different, like a various artist album. It was it felt like an album album. But yeah, I thought it was really cool. What was your score? I give it two. Yeah, and then for uh, if you guys are new or if you've uh, been watching for a while, we've given it a score system. One, didn't like it. Two, you liked it. Three, you really liked it. And then we'll announce a winner of uh, each theme at the end. All right, James, what would you think of Brent's record? Um, I second everything that everybody has already said, and I give it a two. There wasn't much said so far. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. <laughs> I, I really liked it a, a lot. I, I gave it a three. There's a, a, a song for, by a band called The Negatives called I Know I'm the Prowl, and it's really cool. It has some really cool like psych effects on it. I liked it a lot. All right, All right. Yeah. Robert. We always do this to you every time. Late, late dinner, Robert. <laughs> Your audience is gonna wonder why I'm never here. Yeah, he's he's never on time. But uh, so Robert missed the. I think everybody. Everybody's. But we all got to listen to his because he arrived. He plans it just in time for his own record. Okay. Uh, sure. Be, uh, there's a, we had to seat them away from each other this time because of all the hostility that goes back, all the punches and stuff that goes back. Um, Boys Next Door, Nick Cave's first band, uh, I really enjoyed those tracks. The other tracks after that I didn't really enjoy a whole lot, it was just okay, so I give it a two. Alright, so that was Brent's record, Lethal Weapons, let's move on to Dream Pop Jesse's Killer Compilation. Um, oh wait, I gotta give a score, sorry, yeah. sorry Jesse. Uh, Brent's Compilation ended up getting a 2.25. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jesse, go ahead. Out of control. Um, I brought fragments. I did respect another language. In Alvarez's <laughs> Authority yeah. Sampler, it's got a theme. Ice lamp. It's got blonde red hair, big pink, gang gang dance. And Ariel Pink's haunted graffiti. Sweet James, what'd you think? Fragments. Um, I enjoyed the artists that are on side two more than I do on side one. Um, it's not just a personal preference. Did we listen to side two? We did. Side two. We listened to side two. But, but I, I, I actually own this. And the you enjoy are, side one more? No, okay. I said side two more than one. Oh, okay. So what we played was the side that oh, I okay. enjoyed. Gotcha. Um, and uh, I gave it a three. All right. Jonathan, what you think of Fragments? Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I gave it a two. I, I especially like the Big Pink uh, song that they have on there. You better. It's, it's slow, light, like, you know, cough syrup. It's cool. What was it? You gave it a two, you said? I gave it a two. All right. Yeah. Robert, got to skip over you guys. Um, the Blonde Redhead track was really good. I didn't even know it was them. Uh, but the Big Pink, it was like lo-fi, ambient, really cool. Track two was a little too long. I gave it a three, though. Good job, Jesse. Uh, if your record scored a... Oh, sorry, Brian. <laughs> I do this every time I skip over someone. Okay, so... Uh, I really like the big pink track, as everybody else did. It was a good compilation. Uh, I actually like the artist on side one better. I really like Ariel Pink's on graffiti a lot more. Two I gave years? it a two. You like two years also? Yeah. Were they a track one? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so... Uh, I would have given it a three if he played side one, but he didn't. He played side two. He gets like a all right, so uh, uh, Jesse, your record ended up uh, scoring a 2.5. And guys, Woo! if I end up missing someone, please let me know right, right then. So then in the video later, I'm like, oh man. So 2.5 for Jesse. 
Good job. Yeah, good job. All right, let's move on to James. Press that in the comment form. Yeah, what'd you have? Oh, I have to talk about what I had. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I chose a compilation of a different sort. I chose uh, Captain Wheels B-Sides compilation, which is almost like an album, like Cats and Dogs. Um, I love this album. All right, I give it a three. Yeah, that doesn't count, Jonathan. Uh, I gave it, I gave it a one. What? Not, yeah, I didn't really think it. It reminded me of like, whoa, whoa. Let's not name Paul it James. Was just, it just sounded like the swallow. Like it, it just sounded like you know it's something from the back, the back from the bus <laughs> thing. Like, it sounds like nineties. Yes, it sounds like rock. All right, like, so you gave it a one. Means very well. Brent, Catherine Wheel. Uh, so when this went on, we had listened to uh, Brett's insane compilation, mine and a bunch, and I, I think Jesse's, so there was a lot of like craziness between all of those, which I just wrote, this broke up the weirdness of all the other ones. Uh, I really didn't like it because it's 90s radio rock, it's really generic sounding, so I gave it a one. Okay, um, I like Catherine, but I actually like their, I, I like their first two records, and I had a really difficult time listening to this record because it was so distorted. I don't know if it was the mastering or what, but it was harsh, so harsh on my ears that it was completely unenjoyable. But I, I, I have this on CD, and um, but I never really liked it a whole lot compared to their first two albums, so I gave it a two. I get everyone? No. Jesse. Jesse, yeah. sorry. Jesse, um, don't get mad at me. Just you know, <laughs> just let me know. I am. Um, I actually gave it a three because it is Catherine Wheel. You gave it a three because really, it's Catherine. It's Catherine Wheel, yeah. And I do really love their first songs a lot. And you know, most of the songs are from. Okay. Most of the songs were from that. Yeah. So James's record ended up scoring a 1.75, which was actually the least favorite oh, record man. of the night. Everybody that's a Capitol Hill fan out there, put in your comments, talk about how much you love them and how much you love this album. Thank is you. This, is this the one that has, the, uh, has a Pink Floyd Yeah, I wish you were here. Yeah, but he didn't play that side. Mm, I don't play that side. Yeah, he chose a really... I've got it too, he did. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Um, okay. So it's one of the choices we make. So who's next on the comp? Jonathan, right? Yeah. So the comp that I brought is actually from 2009, and it was out of print and it came back in print. It's uh, called uh, Forge Your Own Chains, Heavy Psychedelic Ballads and Dirigents, 1968 to 1974. This is on the Now Again label. And this is a really cool comp, as uh, the, the gentleman who compiles the name is Egon, and he's a real deep digger. And he, he pulls records, like a lot of private press records, a lot of records from, from all over the world, and he pulls like the really deep, Cuts, you know, right. for, for psych and funk and yeah. other type of world. All right, Brent, what'd you think? It's real deep. Okay, so <laughs> I always like heavy psych. Uh, the last track that I think it was the last track he played was the Baby Grandmothers, a Swedish psych band that I really enjoy. I have one of their uh, records. The first song I didn't like is too hippie sounding. Uh, so, but overall, I really liked it, so I gave it a three. Oh, wow. All right. Um, first track was like a boring version of Proc Harum. Second track was Miami Sound Machine, but kind of goth. Third track, <laughs> the guitar solo, thumbs down. I gave it a one. But I did enjoy the bass groove on track two, which I think was a cover of the theme from Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I enjoyed Jonathan dancing to it more. Yeah, that was yeah, pretty that good. I really got right that track. It's great. All right, Dream Pop. Brett, I also thought that the song, the second song, this is crazy. Nina Nana. Wait. Sounded a bit like Miami Sound Machine, but kind of gone. <laughs> okay, you wrote that? <laughs> Let me <Whoa>. see. <laughs> oh my god, we had the same exact thing. Yeah, so I mean, I, what? Great minds think alike. Yeah. That's true. Laverne and What'd you give it? I give it a three. I don't know why. I guess because oh, it's what? weird. That's like a hard score. <laughs> All right, James. <laughs> Brett, I also said that the first track sounded like Coco Harum as well. Wow. Oh, Coco Harum, is that you? Um, it was okay. I kind of didn't like any of it. I thought it was boring, which I second everything that everybody else has said. <laughs> Even what Brett said. <laughs> <laughs> so your score was what? I gave it a one. I right. had to give it a score. If I couldn't 
Okay, we got everyone? Yeah. R Robert's still not here at this point. Uh, Jonathan, your record clocked in at a two. Yeah. The second lowest score. Oh. All right. That's just one side. Really All right, let's do Robert. You're up next. Yeah. Okay, so this was a, a very interesting um, box set compilation <laughs> called Open Strings. And I, I really dig the concept of this. The half of the comp is public domain Middle Eastern stuff from like the 1920s, from Egypt, Iraq, Iran. The second half of the comp is contemporary artists doing music that they consider to be a response to this earlier material. Uh, I'm going to start this one because I really, from the packaging of the whole box and everything, I immediately enjoyed it. And I noticed the names on it right away. Bruce Leicher, who was in Savage Republic, and he started that Independent Projects record label. And uh, that he did the first track, which was kind of a, a guitar in there, and it was kind of uh, circled around. I really enjoyed it. The second track, Paul Metzger, who plays like a modified banjo, 23 string. It sounded like almost a mimic of a sitar, but beyond, kind of beyond the range of a sitar. Really, really good. I, I didn't dislike anything about it. I gave it a solid three. Brent. Okay, so, um, yeah, it was great atmospheric uh, world instrumentals. Um, I liked everything about it to the packaging to the point that I bought it while we were listening to Oh, it. so you did buy it. <laughs> Excellent. Then, and, yeah, but anyway, so the only thing I didn't like is that we didn't get to hear Richard Bishop on there, which he is on there, and he's one of the brothers from the Sun City Girls. And that's one of the reasons I bought it, because I really like everything those guys do. Uh, so I give it a three. Excellent. Three pop. Um, I really liked the very first song that we heard on there. And the second one I liked, but not as much as the first one. I can't remember I said the first one, but I really, really liked it. The Bruce Leiser track, yeah. Yeah. Really hey, and what was your score? I gave it a two, because I really liked it. All right, James. I, uh... I second that everything that everybody has said. But yeah, this, new, this is new quote. No, no, no. It's already no. wore. It's already. No. I was gonna better that already wore right. out. It's welcome. <laughs> I can at least say it for one more time. No, no, no. 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 no I wrote, it. "Stop, drop, and roll." Ethiopian Thai cuisine sounds like a swarm of bees. Ambulance on fire. The art is cool. So basically, it was. It was all right. He just wrote song lyrics <laughs> while he was listening to it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so no, what'd, you, right give it? what'd you give a dog? Oh, I gave it a two. <laughs> two? Jonathan. That was my, my favorite release of the, of the night. It was you, great. So you, I, I, was like, I was like, just like, you know, looking up the box, I was just, I was just gawking on, on it. It was just great. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the, you know, the second track with the 22, yeah. is 22 string banjo on yeah, it, it has a really nice, yeah. you know, droney sound to it. it was, so you obviously gave it a three. Yes. I'm and it's a four record now. set, correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Guys, lift this one up. I'll have the, all the records that uh, were played tonight listed down in the description box so you guys can further check it out. Uh, Robert, you ended up getting a 2.6, which Ooh. was the second highest. Oh. So you didn't win. All right, so that leaves mine, right? Yep. All right. So I brought this little gem here called Smack My Crack. And uh, it's a compilation of like no, no wave, yeah, exactly. No wave, experimental. The track listing on this one on side one is the Butthole Surfers, Ein Streisen, Neu Bauten, Diamanda Galas, William S. Burroughs, Swans, and then on side two also has Tom Waits, Chris Stein from Blondie, and Nick Cave, amongst a couple other tracks. I'll show you the gatefold on this one. Uh, Brent, I'll let you start on this one. Yeah, this one um, I wrote that was a rad avant garde. Uh, compilation. It's stuff I'd want to hear in a record store when I would walk into something that's kind of like independent, cool looking. Uh, Di 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 yeah, what you said. She freaks me out. <laughs> I have one of her records. I seriously, when I hear that, I feel like the devil is invading my soul. So, yeah. And this track was, that one was freak, out of control. Freaky. Uh, Dream Pop. I give it a three. Three. Dream Pop. Um, I liked it. I wrote that I had a, it's a pretty sweet comp of older, lesser known gems. <laughs> uh, Good description. Only familiar to a few artists. I mean, obviously I know No Button and Bubbles for Prison King, Swans. So what'd you give it? Um, 
I gave it a two. I liked it, but it was it was like a soundtrack to kind of like a nightmarish like yeah. performance art. James, well said, Jesse. Well said. I uh, much like Catherine Hill. All the artists on here pretty much uh, were the soundtrack of my life and my youth, of my teenage years, and I gave it a three. The amount of the lost. I actually I feel yeah. bad for you, but that was your <laughs> childhood. You gave it a what, three? <laughs> Jonathan. I, I gave so. it a, a three as well. I really like the William S. Burroughs. Yeah, that was great. Spoken yeah. word track on there, and, I, and the swans track that ends the, the side is awesome. It's, it sounds like you're taking a ride in hell or something like that. It's just <laughs> it's a it's a bizarre <laughs> listen, but like it's a great record to pull out on uh you know, I've been wanting to bring this for some event and this was this was end up being a great setting for that. Robert, you didn't get to hear this one either. Oh the shame. So um I ended up having the winning score tonight, two point seventy five. I think Jesse brought me down to a perfect score from mm -hmm. a perfect score. That's all right. That's all right. So that um, that's it on the comps, right? Smack so, my crack. All right. Killer comps is put to rest. Okay. So our second uh, theme for tonight was a side project. So a great side project from an artist that you love. And uh, let's let Jerry, Dream Pop Jesse start this one off. Okay. Um, I brought Max Q. It's Michael Hutchins from NXS. I played side one, so we got to hear uh, sometimes when the world goes to the year, everything, and then concrete. All right, James, what do you think of Max Q? I uh, I enjoyed it. I uh, the first track I didn't really like that much, and I kind of was like, well, I like the rest of this. And then when the second, third, fourth, and fifth came into play, I really, really liked it. Um, it reminded me of kind of like uh, good stuff. So what'd you get it? I gave it a three. <laughs> three? Really? Okay, Jonathan. Good stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't really my wheelhouse. I gave it a one, but it did bring back a little bit of nostalgia. There's a track in there called Everything, and it's very Morris Day in the time. It reminds me of like the time with eating at, uh, you know, when I was like six years old, eating at Taco Bell in the early 90s, and some track like that would be playing over the loudspeaker, you know, very upbeat. So, so. Taco Bell bean burrito, <laughs> or what you get, like a tostada? Like uh, the Mexican pizza. Mexican pizza. Nice. Yeah. All right. Good choice. Go. And your score is a one. Robert, what'd you get, Max Q? <laughs> I gave it a two. Um, to me, it, it started off really strong. I was really digging it, but um, it kind of lost my interest. This is the first time hearing it, also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and it, there definitely were elements that were a little dated. Yeah. yeah. You give it a two, Brent. Um, I actually agree with Robert. It was. You know, this is my first time listening to it also. I thought it was a kind of a fun mood record, but also lost interest in it towards the end. I wasn't really a fan of it, and I gave it a one. Um, Jesse actually gave this to me last year, and I still haven't actually listened to it. So tonight was my first exposure uh, to this record. Uh, I enjoyed tracks two and three. I thought it was a good family record. <laughs> it, was like Taco Bell. it was too long. <laughs> Side one got too yeah, long. Yeah. yeah. So I gave it a two though, because there was elements I liked. I agree. It was there was a dated sound to it. This funky nine I don't know, late eighties yeah. dated sound Taco Bell. It was, it was, <laughs> it was like continuing the, the suicide blonde sort of Yeah, uh, but not as not as strong. Yeah, not not the cool strong. Yeah, slash I noticed guitar. Robert. I noticed your your <laughs> there's just a button that I didn't see tonight. Right, right. I just uh, borrowed. Oh, okay. So it was yeah. in there. See a little Princess Leia <laughs> action going on there. Did I get everyone on Dream Pops? <laughs> Jesse, I hate to break the news on this one, but I'm gonna say it right away. You got a 1.8, which that was the lowest score. Oh, oh theme How number does it two. Feel today. Welcome to the club. Oh. Yeah, deluxe. Well, welcome well, to the deluxe club. Put you on, Jesse. Well, last month mine was pretty good on both of them. Yeah, you are, Jesse. It's redemption. Right. Next time you have to redeem yourself. I will. All right, James, what was your side project? Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on, I gotta get to it for a second. I, uh, my uh, side project is you don't Singer. No, I know what it is. I was just trying to get it out. <laughs> Singer, Latin Histories. It's uh, Robert Lowe from 90 Day Men and Legends. Um, is a side project. All right, Jonathan, what'd you think of that? I, I liked it a lot. I gave it a three, actually. Wow. I liked it how, how the whole album pro 
progress and it all like you know was really organic and it, it worked each track kind of like merged into the other really smoothly and there's a uh, one track on there called please tell justices we're fine which has a really cool like uh keith crimson uh courtney keith crimson keith robert fred type guitar work on there that i really liked so um, what was your score three three wow robert yeah so this was a really interesting one at the beginning I found it, 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 was, it was too chaotic and I, I was kind of annoyed by the voice, but by the end of the side, I absolutely loved it. Like it was, it was a total slow burn for me. Uh, it's particularly instruments, instrumentation, I thought was phenomenal. And uh, when it would go off into these weird tangents, uh, so I actually gave it a three. Brent? Uh, yeah, I said that it was like a bulky psych avant-garde type of record. Uh, I really liked it also. I pretty much agree with most things that Robert just said. Uh, I gave it a three. I didn't really get a sense of folkiness with this record. Um, I agree with what Robert said in his beginning part about track one, but it stayed that way for the mm -hmm. entire record okay. for me. Um, at times when it got more subdued, it made me think of the doors and I wanted it to stay there, but then it just declined. And track one to me sounded like a band sound checking, but while they were loading their equipment on stage, they somehow pissed the sound guy off. So he was <laughs> mixing them intentionally poorly. So it just, from that point on, I just never enjoyed it. I did not like, I didn't really care for the vocals. It reminded me of like a lesser version of the raincoats, if that makes sense. I gave it a one. Jesse? Uh... <laughs> I give it a two. I thought it was okay. I it wasn't one of my more favorite ones of the night. I kind of agree with some of what with what with, you know Brett had said. Two second what he says. Well, I wouldn't say I second what he says. I would agree with some of what he says, not all of it. Okay, so you gave it a, you gave it a two. A you said? <laughs> all right, so James, your record, you you were over two. You got a two point four. <laughs> All right. break! Wait, is that the highest score you've ever had? Break, 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 break. Daisy Fuentes. <laughs> <laughs> what was that guy that was on the grind? What was his name? Oh, D. Simon Rex. <laughs> what? <laughs> that guy? That was a that was a pretty you guys. You guys were getting bored. Yeah. Yeah. All right, John. Oh, the right. Right. So, so the right. side project on my brought was uh, from uh, I hope I, I can have this name right. The yeah. lead singer of TV on the radio. His name is uh, Tunde Adebimbi. I hope I hope I pronounce that right. The band is called Higgins Waterproof Black Magic Band. And it's a real cool, like heavy dub <coughs> influence. A little has a little hints of psych in it, and it's uh, it came out 2013. 2013, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Robert, what was your opinion on it? I gave it a three. Uh, and, and the interesting thing, I'm not a big TV on the radio fan. This this just to me blew everything that I've heard from them out of the water. Huh. The groove was amazing. Uh, the vocals were cool, kind of strange. Uh, and the dub elements, I thought, were done really well. It wasn't kitschy. It was like a very dedicated, sincere uh, dub influence. So I loved it. Nice. Brent? Uh, I said it was a okay, fun listen. Not too memorable. And it was my bathroom break record. So what would you score it at? Two. All right. Um, I like the two little Dobermans on the record label's logo. Let me show that. Maybe you guys can see this. But that was what I first noticed about these little Dobermans down there. I enjoyed that right off the bat. Um, the dub bass, splendid. I gave it a three. Derek Higgins, right, was on this one? What was it, Higgins? It was Higgins, uh, Derek Higgins, Water 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 Band. Yep. Okay. Derek Higgins. Alright, uh, Dream Pop, what's your opinion on this? Um, I actually really loved it. It was right up there with some of the TV and the radio songs I really liked, like Wolf Like Me. Oh, yeah. I totally love that song. I gave it a three. Oh, cheers. Dream Pop, represent. James Todd, what'd you think? Um, I love, 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 love. Do you oh, second? I actually, I second everything that everybody said. I, uh, I also had been looking for this album for a while and I couldn't find it, so I was really happy that he brought it in because I thought I had to hear it. No, I'll move by. All right, so Jonathan, your record scored a... Like, oh, and I gave it a three. Okay. I said it. 2.8. Very I'll good. Take it. Very good score. Sure. All right, so that takes us to Robert, correct? Yes. Uh, so your side project. Yeah. So 
Uh, this is the self-titled debut and only album by Fistful of Mercy, which is, I guess, a super trio. Uh, Joseph Arthur, Danny Harrison, who is George Harrison's son, and Ben Harper. Kind of a strange mixture of personalities there. Uh, the notable thing about this is it was written and recorded over the course of the weekend. Rent, Fistful of Mercy, what's up? <clears throat> Uh, I thought it was kind of a generic, hippie acoustic, another bathroom break record. Hippie acoustic? Yeah. Okay. It was kind of, you know. It was, it was like a, you sit around a campfire, play an acoustic guitar. It wasn't fun. <laughs> I, I gave it a one. I was over it before it started. <laughs> okay. I was, I was, when it started there was that instrumental and I was like, this is kind of cool. Because in a way it made me think of like Nick Drake, but then there was, to me, there was like a real lack of cohesion from track to track, yeah. so it sounded like a compilation. It just sounded really disjointed. Um, the track three, it sounded like uh, the guy from of Montreal a bit. That's what I thought it was, but it was actually Danny Harrison. Um, I gave it a two because of that instrumental, because that track reminded me of a Montreal. But I had a hard time. It, it just felt so disjointed to me. Jesse, um, I actually liked it. I thought it was a really good last record to kind of wind, wind down the night. But again, I'm into kind of some of that close to it. So what'd you give it? It's kind of, I give it a three. All right, like that, James. So. Uh, whoop, whoop. I, uh, I gave it a three. I really like Joseph Arthur. And that was basically, all he had to say was his name, and I had written three, circled it, and uh, said that he, he had wrote an answer and I cried. Right. It made you cry and you had a baby. But <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Arthur. That was, okay. that was the part when he was strange. <laughs> Jonathan. I, I didn't I didn't like it at all. I, I gave it a one. It's just everything I don't like about, you know, the music. rock. <laughs> it's that it's basically it's not, How's it feel? It's just basically whoa, more whoa, like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I think that's that's a bruise from that. Oh. Basically, a strong shoulder. Like ricochet. Got one of John's rules no hitting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's like basically just glorified hacky sack music. Oh my goodness. Are you like fish fan though? It's bizarre hearing you say that because you were talking about fish earlier. Oh, yeah, the stuff you listen to yeah. is hacky sack. Yeah. Where's the dead fish? Uh, <laughs> Rat dog. Oh, poor guy. I was really high at the time. <laughs> so you gave it a one. I gave it a one. Alright, so that covered everyone. Robert, uh, you I, ended up caught. Clocking in at a two, but you weren't the lowest score. I I have to say though, I'm proud of the like schizophrenic range of scores on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were all that was all over that and the most variety, I think. Some people really loved it, some people really didn't like it. Interesting. Okay, uh, is it you next Brian? Or mine? Uh you. Okay. So I brought in uh well I uh filmed my uh, for those of you that watch my channel regularly, I do my Friday on the Turntable series, and today I feature Peter Murphy's new album, Lion. Coincidentally, someone had left a comment and said that it was his birthday today, and so I figured I'd just continue on with that theme, and since we were doing side project, um, I brought Dally's Car, The Waking Hour. Uh, this came out as a side project of Peter Murphy right after he left Bauhaus, and it's a collaboration with Mick Carr and the bass player from Japan. They recorded this one EP, and then 25 years later, while Mick Karn was um, uh, deal, uh, going through his uh, cancer treatment, they ended up recording another little EP, uh, and Mick Karn passed away before it was released. But it did come out, uh, released digitally. It was called In Glad Aloneness. But this is the original one from 1984. Um, let's start off with Dream Pop Jesse on this one. I like it. I'm, some of it felt kind of like that the mirror song. It was one of my lesser favorite, like favorite or lesser of the favorite songs, but I thought it was pretty good. I gave it a three. Oh, all right, James Todd. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say yes. It sounded dated. Um, at one time, we thought it was actually Push It. That was like <laughs> song <laughs> down by song. And then the bass line actually hit least, the rhythm. Yeah, yeah it was great. Singing it. Yeah, we it did. Really Jonathan did a dance. Yeah, he did. Yes, yeah, on film, two cameras. Oh, um, two cameras. I also thought that the first song kind of sounded like They Might Be Giants, which was kind of weird. And then um, the bass would kind of remind me of Primus a little bit, just because it was like bassy. Fretless. Kind of, and yeah. busy. But, uh, busy. 
Well, when it's when the that, I drop the needle on this one, it's a jarring, immediate sound. You know what I mean? So but, what'd you give it? But it took a while, and then I finally got into it, and I kind of enjoyed it. So I ended up giving it a three. Oh, nice. Jonathan. Well, at first when you put on that, I didn't like it at all. It just it sounded like just in an 80s music. But then that song that James said didn't sound like Push It came on, and it has like this really cool like synthy Middle Eastern vibe on it. I was won over at that time, and, and I'm surprised that hasn't been sampled. You know, what? Is it Push It? No. No, <laughs> no I don't. No, so I if you have any buddy DJ, DJ, DJs out there, you should sample that track. It's then you gave it a... I gave it a two. Two? Yeah. Robert. So, uh, I've always... I like Mick Karn's work on, on other people's projects. Uh, after hearing this, I love Mick Karn. I mean, I, I thought the bass playing was just out of this world. And uh, I, I really liked pretty much everything about this. I gave it a three. And the interesting thing is, uh, to me, it didn't sound dated, so that must just mean that part of my brain is still in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> You'd live in an 82. I guess so. Throw that pig spin two mile, quarter mile, right? <laughs> so you gave it a three, you said? I gave it a three. <laughs> Brent. Um, I also said that I have great breaks and would be awesome for someone to sample and put some good, some good beats out there. I also think that I agree with everybody, it was a little too 80s in a bad way but there was some really cool parts of it also, so I gave it a two. All right, so uh, my record ended up getting a 2.6. Damn. So who's left? Just you? Me. All right, Brent. Mine is Hunks and His Punks, which is Hunks from the Gravy Train and Chairman Shaw from Chan and the Clams. It's a doo y garage power pop sounding side project. Probably are. Alright, uh, let's go backwards. Robert. Uh, on the plus side, the, the whole Phil Spector Ronette sound hits the sweet spot every time. Uh, you really can't go wrong with that. It works in any context I hear. Um, that being said, on the negative side, um, it did make me want to just go back and listen to the, the original stuff. So overall, I get this. Jonathan. I, I, I actually enjoyed this record. It was really fun. And one of the tracks I like the most the first track called Lover's Lane it has that classic as uh cover saying Phil yeah. Spectre uh, yeah. four by four classic drum. Uh, it, was, it was cool. And your score was what? Three. Three. James Todd. I said if I could go to Lover's Lane, it'd be okay. Do you want me baby? I give it a three. <laughs> <laughs> Deep. <laughs> Real deep. Dream pop. I am um, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yummy, yummy. <laughs> I've got. You guys should write greeting cards. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Pop in my tummy. I've what? got pop in my tummy. I gave You're drinking a lot of soda. A four. <laughs> four I gave it a four. Whoa. Really? The first yeah, four I ever. Right here, yeah. It doesn't count. I can't wait for it. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. So you this gave one it a... goes up to eleven. All right. So I agree with what Robert said about the Phil Spector Ronettes. That's immediately what I thought. But then the vocals came in, and I didn't really like it. And there's a guy singing on some yeah, things. Did not like his voice at all. Um, so I liked the music Four on months. track one, but I didn't like the vocals. So, but I still, you know, I give it a two. It was just there. Give it a two. So, uh, Brent, you ended up getting a 2.6, but, but the high score for the side project theme went to Jonathan with a 2.8. What? Wait, what did you write? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, Brent and I tied with 2.6, followed by James with a 2.4, Robert with a 2, and Jesse with a 1.8. Yeah. What was the high score on the... Uh, the high score, I'll read those ones out. So the compilation followed in this order. I got a 2.75 for the Smack My oh, Crack. Nice. Robert, you got a 2.6. Uh, Dream Pop, 2.5. Brent, 2.25. Jonathan, a 2. And 1.75 for James Todd. Plus.
Yep. So guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching Saturday Night Music Club number 11. Thank you once again to John Rose of the Record Room guys. Be sure to check them out. Follow them on Facebook. We'll have a link for them on down there. They always post some great records, great story, you know. So uh, yeah, guys. Rest in peace, later. Tommy Ramon. Tommy Ramon, R.I.P. Wait, wait for the end. There'll be some good cuts. Yeah. Don't I do don't it. Stop the video right now.